thinking and yatadarasunuhu bainahum they study it together um, so the the yasin which is the 36th uh, chapter of the quran is named ibn abbas oddly enough i mean the muqatta'at i think maybe somebody did anybody talk about the muqatta'at before the 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 huruf of the quran the huruf of the quran are not known i mean the soundest thing of the huruf is allahu a'lam Allah knows what they mean. But Yasin, of all of them, Yasin is the one that most of the ulama actually do interpret. The other ones, they tend to say, I mean, some say Alif Lam Meem, Alif is for Allah, Lam is for Jibreel, Meem is for Muhammad, and that's Allah to Jibreel to Muhammad. I mean, you get these types of uh, tafsir that they, they say. But generally, we don't know. Taha, you know. But I would say one of the most intriguing for me aspects of the muqta'at is it's almost like Allah is saying before you even think about reading this book set aside what you think you know. Because if you come to this book with arrogance there's nothing in this book for you. Like the, uh, you know, the, the, uh, the student who came to the sheikh and he was saying, I studied with so-and-so, th these hadiths, and I studied with so-and-so, this book, and I studied with so-and-so, this book, and I studied with so-and-so, this book. And he was going on and on and on. The sheikh was saying, so, so what do you want to do? He said, I want to study with you. And so the sheikh started pouring the tea, and then when it, the glass got full, it just kept fully, you know, going over. And the student said, stop, it's full. He said, why? And he said, because it can't take any more. <laughs> and he said, so a full cup can't take any more. He said, right. He said, well, you seem like a full cup. You know, what, what, <laughs> you know, what are you coming to me to learn <laughs> for? So the, uh, you know, the Arif Lam Mim is have some humility when you come to this book. Now, another aspect is Sauser, for people who know uh, linguistics or people who study linguistics, Sauser, who was a famous linguist, uh, about a hundred years ago developed a theory of language uh, which is where we get structuralism from. Structuralism, the idea that languages have these deep structures and uh, he, he identifies language as being related to differences that language is not about definition so much as it is about the differences of things in relation to other things. So there's these structures and if you work out the semantic patterns you can understand language. One of the things Saussure says though is the phoneme is meaningless. That's a principle in structuralism. That all of language begins with doubled phonemes. You need a dyad to begin. Like of. Of. You need those two sounds. Ah uh, doesn't really mean anything. <laughs> doesn't mean anything. That was Saussure's theory. This negates that theory. Because it's meaning all the way down. Even the letters have meanings. We just don't know what they mean. Everything is meaningful. Nothing is without meaning. These letters, letters are amazing. And, and the Arabic letters are amazing. Ain is an amazing letter. You know, Ain. I mean, just have you have to say it, Ain. You know, and it's like squeezing your, what, and Ain means essence. You know, it's the essence of something. It means the I. Right? That's an amazing thing. Look at lamb. Lamb is an amazing letter. Lamb. L you know, have you ever seen babies when they, they put their tongue? Mothers know this. They always put their tongue, newborns. You know how they put their tongue on the top of their mouth? Uh, and they do that. Do you, do you know how they do that? Have, uh, am I making this up? They do all do it. All babies do that. That's the beginning of La ilaha illallah. Because that was what we were created to say. And so they're learning how to use that tongue to say the lamb letter. You know what lulan means in Greek? Lulan. It means to soothe. Because the most soothing sound to the Greeks was la la la. Which is why we say lullabies. La ilaha illallah. Why is that? Why is that recognized even by the ancient Greeks? That that sound, 
La 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 la. You have to tune. No, no, it's not la la. It's la ilaha illallah. <laughs> it, it's much nicer. It has meaning, and it'll soothe your heart. Really, it's amazing. So these are amazing things. Ra is an amazing letter. I love Ra. And the Arabs call it Harfu Takrir, which is the, the letter that does Rrrr. That's what Takrir means. But then they say, but it's named that so that you don't do Rrrr. Right? So Moroccans, when they recite Quran, they always do the Rrrr. But if you go to the East, they, they don't do that. Right? But the, the Ra sound, if you look at Arabic, Rrrr letters usually relate to pulling something along, like Marra, Farra. Karra, right? It's amazing to, because the rrrr, right? Marra, marra, it keeps happening over and over again. Karra, to flee, farra, to flee, karra, to go back. So it has the idea of something being dragged. Yajurru, jarra, to drag, literally. That's what jarra means. And then lam and ra are related. They're from the same makhraj. Say la. Now say ra. Right? Do you feel the articulation? That's called a makhraj. Ra, la. Right? And that's why ra and la are often interchangeable in the Arabic language, in words. You can actually interchange lam and ra in words and you'll get the same meaning. It's amazing. So, the, um, the huruf and muqata'at are these secrets that Allah doesn't tell us what they mean, but we know they have meaning. So we say, Allahu A'lam. But Yasin, if you take the word insan and you turn it into a diminutive, which is called a tasghir in grammar. Uh, a diminutive is, is like uh, pepito in Spanish. Right? Pepito. Little pep, pepi. Right? So, uh, we don't, in English, you know, we don't really, we say little, pepe, we don't say pepito. So, our diminutives aren't very sophisticated. But in Arabic, you have diminutives where you can say insan, and if you want to say little man, you say unaisin. Unaisin. And ya means o. Oh. And then the Arabs like to do this thing which they call hadf which is to cut things out that they don't, they just sound long or... So unaisin is too long to say little man. So they just say seen to mean little man. Or big man because tasghir is used for ta'zim also. So it's a nice thing about Arabic. The Arabs have wonderful strategies for insulting people and then when the person gets insulted they can always switch and say, I didn't mean that. <laughs> it's really interesting. There's so many devices in the Arabic language to do that and one of them is tasghir because you can call a man tasghir for tahqir to like belittle him but you can also call it to exalt him because it's a term of endearment oh my little one and it's an in term a term of so you can if you call a man you little man and he's what how dare you call me little no 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 I meant that you're a, I love you <laughs> <laughs> So that's what Ibn Abbas said that that meant. Some, and he said it was in Logat Tay and in a riway in Syriania that it meant little, that it meant man in Syriania, seen. So Yasin is how it begins. Now some say that, you know, generally there's a what they call idhar. You have idgham and idhar in tajweed. Uh, idgham is when you assimilate a word into another word, like with the huruf al idgham, yarmalun. So you say, sirajan wa haja. That's idgham. Some say that the scene gets assimilated into the following wow, and others say that it's idhar, which would be unusual because the noon is a letter of assimilation. But there are points in that. Kalla bal rana ala qulubihim is an example of lam, which is, would normally have an idgham there. It has idhar in that surah. Um, but in warsh you don't. There's idgham. So you say kalla bal rana ala qulubihim in, in warsh. Rewrite warsh. There's idgham. In the other there's idhar. So some of them say it goes yasin wal Quran, like that, into that. And others say no, you stop on Yasin and do that. And then it has the, the med on both of those letters. So it begins 
with that opening. And then it begins with an oath. And this is one of the things about the huruf al muqatta'at uh, is that they are always dealing with the Qur'an. So if you look at the, the it, it's always followed by some expression of the Qur'an. One of the things that happened to the, the Prophet him when revelation came to him, it was like a bell. Now a bell is reverberation. It's dawi, dawi. If you look at the word kun, and I learned this from a great musician, but I thought it was a very interesting, uh, he was a f uh, famous oud player from uh, Nubia, Hamza Alauddin. Because he said Allah began existence with kun, and he said that the ka is a cutting sound, which is true, it's used for cutting. In fact, in Arabic, many words that have cut are relate to cutting. And in English, we even use cutting to cut. So ka is a cutting sound. And then noon is a vibratory sound. Kun. And so he was saying that the silence, you know, from, from that existence comes from nothingness into being. So it's literally cutting the nothingness and then the noon is the reverberation of existence. And one of the things that we know about existence is it's all reverberating. Like physicists tell us, everything has a resonance. Everything is resonating. And so resonance is, is dawi in Arabic, dawi. And the Qur'an, they talk about the Qur'an resonating. That the Sahaba kanu yaqra'unuhu ka dawi al nahl Like the reverberation of the, the, uh, the, uh, the bees. And one of the things about reciting Qur'an with tajweed is that you're forced to do these sounds that you normally don't do which creates these resonances and affects you because these things have an effect on you. When you recite the Qur'an properly, you, it's forcing you to... Your whole body begins to resonate. Yaseen. It's, it's there. The sound itself is power. The sound is power. There's power in the sound itself. And... And so it's followed by this oath. The wow there is, is for qasam, to swear an oath. Wal Quran al Hakim. By the Quran, the wise Quran. Wal Quran al Hakim. And that's why it's Quran al Hakim with the kasra because of the wow. Wal Quran al Hakim. Innaka la min al mursaleen. Indeed, verily, you are one of those who have been sent. Why? Why the oath? One of the interesting things about when you, when you say something, that, a proposition, somebody will say, bring your proof. What lawyers always do if they're good is they always establish their proofs before the proposition. So they give you all the reasons and then they have their summation, which is to tell you why. Because they want you to rationally come to the conclusion and then they'll add stories in there to get the emotional content as well because they know that emotion is important but they will give you the rational and then they bring you the proposition now you have to understand an oath because one of the things about modern people is they don't know the power of words anymore I'll give you an example in this country it, 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 does it, who knows Alexander Hamilton first time probably ever mentioned in a discussion of the Quran but Alexander Hamilton uh, was the Secretary of Treasury under Washington, right? How did he die? In a duel with a man called Aaron Burr, who had been Vice President. Isn't it interesting that we had a Vice President in this country who killed the Secretary of Treasury in a duel? <laughs> I mean, America, the beautiful, it's amazing. I mean, could you imagine them doing that now? Maybe they should <laughs> solve some of the problems in Washington. You know, I challenge you to a duel. I demand satisfaction. You know, Glenn Beck, I'd like to challenge him to a duel. I mean, these people have to know that words have meaning. That you can't just say things and not think that there's no meaning attached to those things. When you disparage the honor of people, when you vilify human beings that you have no knowledge of and you say things about them and who they are and, and what evil they've done, they've had no trial.